Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Solar Age. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what they have to offer. All right. Okay, when you open the box, the first thing you can expect is a, a nice uh, eight and a half by 11 user's manual which is nice look at this it's all like in uh all in color nice big font i like this this is pretty nice all right and then it is looks to be fully encased in styrofoam all right and there it is very simple it's uh just the user's manual and the battery and the terminal bolts are already on the terminals they have the uh, washers and the lock washers built in. Uh, looks like uh, they have epoxied uh, terminals. So everything is nice and waterproof. So, okay, so the front of the battery says Solar Ridge Lithium Iron Phosphate 12 volt 100 amp hour. And then here is uh, your service email and the website. Side is nothing, back is nothing, side, bottom is nothing. So it is a very standard looking battery. It does have a nylon strap for carrying, which can be easily taken off, just like that, or put back on very easily. Let's see the size of the battery, a little under 12 and three quarters inches across. It's about eight and a half inches tall, and the depth is six and three eighths inches and it weighs 22.5 pounds. Okay, and I'm looking over this manual, and you know what, I like this manual. It actually tells you a lot of information and it's very easy to read. First, it shows you, uh, you know, how to connect your batteries in series, how to connect them in parallel. Very easy, positive to negative, and for parallel, it's positive to positive and negative to negative. And then it actually goes further into saying how to connect your batteries into both series and parallel. So if you have a multitude of batteries, how to connect them all in parallel first and then connect those parallel sets into series. So I really like this. And it also shows you where to put your load wires. So it doesn't say, you know, put them on the first cell or the first battery in your battery bank. It's, it shows exactly where you should put them. And then on this page right here, it actually gives you all the voltages for your, uh, your solar charge controller or your solar controller inverter combo. Uh, it basically tells you flat out what your settings should be for this battery. I really like that because that's that was confusing for me when I first got my first lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, guessing what the float and the, and the boost and the equalize, I mean, what do you even set those for? This book tells you all of that, so that's great. Okay, on with the battery. First thing you should do when you get your battery is check the voltage of the battery straight out of the box. I always say for a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, it should be between 13.1 and 13.2 volts. So let's go ahead and check that now. All right, and the voltage is, ooh, 13.33. 13.33 is a little bit higher than I like, but that's still within the range of what the battery can handle. So I'm not worried about it damaging the battery because of that voltage. It's just that usually I like to have my battery shipped to me around 50% you know, or lower and 13.3 could uh, maybe be around 60 or 70%, but that's still okay for the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery up and then we're gonna do a discharge test. All right, we got this battery charging at 20 amps using the Latime uh, lithium iron phosphate battery charger. So I'll come back in a couple hours and we will do a discharge test. Okay, the capacity test is done for the SolarEdge 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. And our results are, we got 100.92 amp hours. That equates to 1227.9 watt hours and this test took eight hours and 22 minutes. So now that the battery is all charged up again, we're gonna go ahead and do high amperage testing to make sure that this battery is safe. Okay, our high amperage test is all set up. What we have is our 12 volt solar age battery all hooked up. We have it connected to an amp meter and a voltmeter so we can monitor both of those. 
and then we have it connected to a 5,000 watt 12 volt inverter. And with that inverter, we're gonna be powering a 500 watt heater and we'll be able to adjust our, our wattages with our new wave induction cooktop right here. So what we're gonna to try to do is get right around uh, right around 100 amps, because that's what the battery says it can do continuously at a max. So we're gonna to try to get it right around there and we'll set a timer for like five minutes to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Okay, so first we're gonna turn on our new wave to uh, the 600 watt setting on uh, medium high and hit start. And then we're gonna turn on our heater. Let's go ahead and start our timer. There we go. And right now we're using right around 100 amps and our voltage has dropped down to 12.57. So that is all very respectable. Uh, the amperage is still dropping. It's probably gonna drop down to, hopefully it'll hold around 98, which is perfect. We're gonna go ahead and let this run for about five minutes and then uh, we'll do an over amperage event to see if, it, if the battery turns off when it goes over amp. Okay, well, it's been six minutes actually, and uh, it's been running this test with no problem. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the, uh, the battery on a thermal camera. And we can see that the battery, uh, it looks like it's doing pretty good. On the right hand side of the thermal image, you can see the top and bottom range of the uh, temperature in Fahrenheit. And everything about this battery is you know, below 90 degrees. I mean, even the terminals are staying nice and cool. Oh, that kind of scared me. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you can see that there's a little bit of warmth on the top of the battery, but nothing to be concerned about. There's a little bit of warmth right here, but again, it's not hot at all. It's, you know, it's in the 80s, it's 80 degrees. So the battery is performing very well. All right, so let's see what happens if we uh, crank up the juice on this. Um, will the battery shut off? Because it should. It should shut off if it goes over the 100 amp threshold uh, for an extended amount of time, like, you know, like five seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and push it to like 150 amps, and we're going to see uh, how long it takes to shut off. Okay, we're turning up the new wave to 1300 watts. And our amperage is now 170. And our voltage, our voltage has dropped down to 12, 12.01, 171 amps. Everything's running at full speed. Honestly, this thing shouldn't be running for this long. We're gonna do this until it reaches, well, I don't know, nine minutes. Voltage of the battery is down to 11.97. Amperage is 171. Time is eight minutes, 30 seconds. And the battery just kind of keeps on going. That's pretty unfortunate. It really shouldn't be powering this low for this long. Okay, well it's now been nine minutes and it's still running everything just fine. So it's running it, but it really shouldn't be. Okay, so I'm gonna shut all this off and we're gonna do a surge amp pull from my shopsmith here, which can do around 400 amps. So we'll see if this battery can power it. All right, I got my shopsmith. I got my shopsmith plugged in. I've got my clamp meter set to uh, capture the highest amperage that it'll pull. We'll see if this battery can do it. Here we go. All right, it turned on that shopsmith and check out the amp pull that it did. 409 amps. Uh, now that's, I mean, that's impressive, but I'm kind of wondering, will this battery ever shut off? Will it, I mean, what can't it do? I mean, will it just go higher and higher and higher until, it, until the internal wires catch on fire? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do another high amperage test, but I'm gonna try to push it for, 250 amps something like that so, and i'm not going to do it i'm only going to do it for like 10 15 seconds because we're starting to get into the zone where it's kind of scary so i'm going to put some safety goggles on and we're going to do a really high amperage test just to see if there's any safety features when it comes to high amperage for this battery okay so we're going to do a second high amperage test and this time i'm maxing it out 
Um, I've got my new wave, which can do 1300 watts. I've got a griddler, which can do 1200 watts. And I've got two heaters, which will do a combination of 700 watts. So we're gonna turn all of this on and we're gonna see how long this battery can power it. It shouldn't power it really at all for longer than a few seconds. Uh, if it goes over 15 seconds, it's a definite fail. So let's go ahead and just start turning stuff on. Small heater, our amperage is going up. Uh, medium sized heater, let's go ahead and set this to max sear. Okay, our amperage is now, it's going up 170, 180, 190. All right, and let's turn on our griddler. Our voltage is down to 11.3. Our amperage is holding at 310 amps. Uh, the inverter is starting to kind of disagree with this. Our voltage is down to 11.17. Amperage still at 308. Everything is running. This is, yeah, this is scary. So I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, well, I turned it all off. We were constantly pulling 300 amps, which is three times more than what it should be. And uh, so unfortunately for this battery, when it comes to the safety features of the maximum amount of amperage, it's kind of a fail. So what I'm gonna do now is this battery does have cold temperature charging protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw it in my freezer for the day. And then we're gonna see if we can charge it. All right, well, it's been 24 hours, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this battery out of the freezer and we're gonna see if it will charge. Okay. I got my Latime 20 amp charger right here. We have a green light here that's flashing. That means it's on standby. Uh, if it turns red, that means it's charging. A flashing red means that it's a fault. And a solid green means that it is fully charged. So we'll see what happens when we charge it up. All right, here we go. Perfect. What that means right there is that this battery has low temperature charging protection and this charger will not charge it while it is too cold. So good job. All right, so what do I think of the SolarEdge 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, this thing does a lot. It will give you all the power that you need. It does come with a great product brochure or user's manual um, that gives you a lot of really good information. Um, it does, have at least 100 amp hours of uh, capacity, which is, which is great. Um, it does have low temperature charging protection, and overall, it's a pretty good value for what you're spending. Now, the things that it doesn't have is, it doesn't have any kind of Bluetooth, so you're not gonna get an app to go with this battery. And also, the over amperage protection, uh, I could not get it to trigger. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the SolarEdge 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description if you want to look into it further. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.